Welcome. What I want to do is show you how to solve this equation. And when solving an equation, the main important thing you always want to think about is isolating the variable. How do I get a variable by itself? So I see I have my variable A, and the problem that I come up to is I have three of the variables. Not only do I just have like two, but I have three variables. And I also have variables on different sides of the equation. Now remember when solving, you want to isolate the variable, get one variable by itself on one side of the equation. So I have a couple options, right? I, I need to see which one of these A's, how am I going to get them all by itself? Or you know, what am I going to do to get the A by itself? So the first thing I do is I notice parentheses. And whenever I see parentheses, I always think order of operations. I always want to look inside my parentheses and see if I can simplify my um, equation any further. So I look inside of this parenthesis and this parenthesis, and I notice since they're not like terms, I can't simplify it further. The next thing I think about with parentheses is the distributive property. Can I simplify this by distributive property to eliminate the parenthesis? So what I'm going to use is I'm going to go out the order. I'm going to use the operation that I have these parentheses in there for because I'm multiplying my 6 times this parenthesis and the negative 2 times everything inside this parenthesis. So by applying the distributive property, I'm going to multiply the 6 times both terms and I'm going to multiply my negative 2 times both terms. So here I have 6 times a with 6a. 6 times 12 is going to be a positive 72. And then I have a negative a is still going to be there. Then I have negative 2 times a, which is a negative 2a. And then negative 2 times 6, which is a negative 12. So now I've simplified my terms. And I want to see, can I combine anything any way further? But before I even get to that, my main job to get your variable by itself is you first got to get all your variables onto the same side. So what I'm going to do before, I can co could combine this a little bit before, but before I do that, I'm going to get my variables all on the same side. Now since I already have two A's over here, I'm going to eliminate the A on the right side and add it over here to the left side. I could do this in a couple faster steps, but I'm going to kind of take this step by step for you. So therefore, I'll have 2A plus 6A plus 72 minus A equals, now negative 2A plus 2A gives me zero, minus 12. Then I almost have all the a's by themselves, but before I do that, I'm going to subtract the 72 on both sides. Now remember, it's an equation, so whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side, like adding the 2a onto both sides. Now by subtracting the 72, again, that's going to give me 0, so therefore I'm going to no longer going to have the 72. Therefore, I have 2a plus 6a minus a equals a negative 84. Now I have all the variables on the same side. It's very easy for me to just combine them all together. 2a plus 6a is 8a minus a is going to be 7a equals a negative 84. So now the last thing I need to do is use my inverse operation one more time to get my a by itself. So you can see from here all the way down to here, I've finally got it down to 1a. Now I notice my a is being multiplied by 7. So to undo multiplication, I'm going to divide by 7 on both sides. And therefore, 7 divided by 7 is 1. 1 times a is a. So a is going to be equal 7 goes into negative 84 a negative 12 times. Now, to check my answer, I could always plug in negative 12 back into my value of a into this top equation and see if my equation is still going to equal each other. But looking at my operations and to keep this video kind of short, um, I can see that it looks like my work is correct. And therefore, I'll go with the solution of this equation is a equals negative 12. Thanks.